So I'm doing good job. The president, please be seated. I would like uh, to invite uh, the international co-prosecutor to make uh, your oral submission. The floor is yours. Mr. President, your honours, my learned friends of the defence and the civil parties, I would like to say something brief regarding your decision, the consequences of your decision of the 20th of, of the 20th of February 2009 regarding translation rights, because these have implications for the two hearings that will be held today. It is like a house of cards falling down in the wind. The two appeals were primarily based, especially the second, on the translation of all every single page of the case file in French so that the international lawyer could understand it. With your decision of the 20th of February, most of the arguments presented by the defense in the two appeals have become irrelevant because the defense was basing its arguments on the possibility that the, def the chamber would grant them their application on translation rights. That said, I should now like to turn to the appeal against the order denying release issued by the co-investigating judges. And I will start with the discretionary power of the investigating judges. The co-investigating judges have discretion to refuse a request for release, and such power takes account of the material in the case file and the probative value of the evidence and the previous conduct or the prior conduct of the charged person, the interests of witnesses and victims, and more generally the interests of justice. It seems to us that the co-investigating judges correctly exercised their discretion in their order, and the defense has failed to show that the co-investigating judges committed any error. The conditions governing such an error are fairly restrictive because, as it is said in the judgment of the 16th of April 2007, of the ICTR Appeals Chamber in the Sredoje Lutkic case at paragraph 5, which I shall read out in English because there is no French version available. Council continues in English. We will only overturn the trial chamber's decision on provisional release where it is found to be, one, based on an incorrect interpretation of governing law, two, based on a patently incorrect conclusion of fact, or three, so unfair or unreasonable as to constitute an abuse of the trial chamber's dis discretion. Nous ne sommes pas dans ce cas de figure aujourd'hui. This is not what obtains here. Furthermore, the ap appeal does not mention a significant change in circumstances that could justify the provisional release of the appellant In fact, on the 28th of October 2008, before, the co-investigating judges took into account all the arguments submitted by the defense and reviewed the investigation file at the time. They also rejected the request for release on the grounds that the conditions set forth in Rule 63.3 were still valid and that the duration of the provisional detention was not excessive. Now turning to Rule 63.3, it provides two conditions that must be fulfilled so that a person can be placed in, conditional, in provisional detention. The defense relies 
on uh, the well-founded reasons that the appeal may have the appellant may have committed the crimes charged we con con consider that this condition is still being fulfilled that the co-investigating investigating judges bri briefly but brilliantly reasoned this in paragraph 7 to 11 of their order we shall return to this in greater detail in our hearing this afternoon moving on to rule 633b as we said in our reply in other and in other written briefs the provisional detention of the charged person is necessary within the meaning of rule 633b and applies to at least four of the five separate conditions i shall not dwell on these five conditions but three of them have been challenged by the defense the defense considers that the co-investigating judges refusal to grant provisional release is based mainly or only on the seriousness of the crimes charged we agree that the seriousness of the crime charge alone cannot justify a refusal to grant release but that is not what the co-investigating judges say in their order what they say is that this is a factor to take into consideration in examining the five separate criteria to decide to continue the provisional detention this is consistent with international law combined with other factors the seriousness of the crimes charged can be considered as being relevant to deny provisional release I refer in this respect to the Gotovina judgment of the 17th of January 2008 at paragraph 15 it is vital for the credibility of the ECCC that proceedings concerning charged persons comply with or follow the rights and interests of all parties for justice to be done we, it must be ensured that the charged persons or accused participate at all stages of the proceedings next witnesses shall, should be present and should cooperate the security of documentary evidence should be guaranteed and the chambers should work in serenity in view of the importance of these proceedings for Cambodia and the international community any risk to these conditions must be analyzed carefully because no error can be permitted it is like work walking on a tightrope without a safety net with regard to the risk of pressure being exerted on the witnesses and victims and i refer here to rule 63 3 bi your chamber has already noted before that the vast majority of witnesses and potential witnesses are ordinary people who may be intimidated by the process of justice these are people who have suffered trauma these are people who have are used to being quiet because of the impunity that has reigned and these are people who may be afraid to give testimony for fear of reprisals and here we have a former head of state who has held high office all his life both before 1975 and after 1979 and of course I shall not dwell on the Khmer Rouge period in this regard Rouge period in this regard many of the witnesses have heard what the charged person has said and he still has influence today with former Khmer Rouge members in Pailin or elsewhere. In short, this is a person with influence who in 2002 issued threats of reprisals in the press in case he was arrested. The key witnesses, of which there are only a few in this case, should be able to tell their story without fear of intimidation or revenge this is even more so in the case of former subordinates but there is an aspect 
of Cambodian culture, which is that the authorities are respected and feared even when they are no longer in power. There is a concrete risk that the liberation of the charged person would fuel the fears of the victims and witnesses to such an extent that it would prevent them from participating in the proceedings. We must also take into account that in Cambodia, the judicial system is still being established. Witness protection is a fledgling concept. Violence is a fact of life, and access to weapons is easy. In the Haradinaj case, in the ICTY trial chamber, on 20th July 2007, it was said that if a chamber does not take all the necessary measures to guarantee the appearance of witnesses before the judges, it would compromise the proper administration of justice. And the chamber noted that there was a risk that it could not pro perform its do prime duty, which is to ascertain the truth. We must also take into account the access of the charged person to the case file and therefore to the names of potential witnesses, of whom many have not yet been interviewed. He also has access to the names of civil parties. The co-investigating judges lastly considered rightly that in this case, because of the media coverage of the charged person since his arrest, the time that has passed has only increased the risk of interference and pressure on witnesses in case of release. There is every reason to disregard the defense arguments in this regard. With regard to the protecting the security of the charged person and preserving public order, I shall not dwell on what has already been submitted in writing. I will just highlight some new information that could emphasize the threat to the charged person's safety and the risk to public order. We should bear in mind that evaluating, evaluating such risks necessarily includes anticipation. My colleague has already mentioned, mentioned the event of 1991 when an angry crowd threw stones at the charged person. The defense in its submissions forgot one thing with regard to the, per the charged person's residence in Pailin. The fact that he lived there without any major incidents should not lead the court to think that the charged person would not encounter problems if he was released. In fact, Pailin is a stronghold of the former Khmer Rouge, and the charged person and non chair lived there. I do not think that they lived in peace, but I think they were well protected when they were there. At the time, it was not possible for numerous incidents to occur. Now the charged person has been arrested, and things have changed completely. I should like to mention the conclusions or the findings of an inquiry by the University of Berkeley entitled, So We Will Never Forget, of Gen January 2009. The university made a presentation on this to the ECCC, and very recently the co-investigating judges considered that it was not necessary to include it formally in the record of the case. At the beginning of page three, of the summary, it is apparent that 90% of the persons interviewed considered that the Khmer Rouge should be tried for the crimes they committed. Also, the majority of the interviewed persons said that they felt hate towards the Khmer Rouge who were responsible for acts of violence. 61% says counsel of the interviewed persons said 
that they wanted the Khmer Rouge to suffer as they had suffered. Lastly, nearly 40% say that they would take revenge if they were offered the opportunity. So in our view, this study only confirms what we knew. Many people, and some people say it's 30% of Cambodians, suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, especially amongst the survivors of the democratic Kampuchea regime. These people have not, in general, received the appropriate care, and therefore their reactions in the face of the resurgence of the anxieties occasioned by these proceedings is not foreseeable. So this deep-rooted hate and violence are not rhetorical. They may well occur. And who today would like to take such a risk? Who would like to play puppet masters in such a situation? In addition, we have some concrete information to corroborate the risk we have raised. In the New York Times of the 17th of June 2008, two victims said, and you will forgive me for quoting such hateful words, that they wanted to chop up non chair into little bits and pour salt on his wounds, to give him a drubbing, to torture him, and to shock him with electricity so that he could talk. Another said, to quote, want to see that they wanted to see the charged person to suffer as they had suffered because it is only by the charged person being killed that they would find peace. Similar threats were repeated during the press conference which followed the lively hearing of the 4th of December 2008 on the issue of translation. As you saw in the video footage of this conference which was filed in the record of the case, the first victim said bitter words and had and had violent gestures when responding to the defense counsel and another threatened threatened to use a terrorist group and said that this she would or he would twist his neck and eat him let us be clear we deplore we regret these incidents and statements and the fact that these people are attacking the lawyers of Kyo Sampan. But we should not take lightly or minimize these incidents because they strengthen the risk, the real risk of violence against the charged persons, his lawyers, or the ECCC as an institution if the charged person were to be released. Continued suffering amongst the victims of the regime, but that the judges had failed to establish that the release would disrupt public order. In fact, these two issues are not mutually exclusive. We shall refer briefly to a report by the Institute of the, of, for Economy and Peace of 2008, which we mentioned in our response to the appeal which says in regard to Cambodia that there is a high probability of acts of violence, a high probability of violent crime, and that there is possibility and that it is easy to procure small arms. This is at odds with the defense argument that Cambodia is no longer a fragile state. Lastly, I would ask you to consider closely the jurisprudence of ICTY, which is referred to by the defense, especially in footnote 62, pertaining to the purported provisional release of charged persons in post-conflict contexts, because this jurisprudence actually wholly contradicts the argument it is supposed to buttress. Neither Lukic nor Galic, nor Boskowski, nor Gotovina 
were granted provisional release in the quoted decisions. The appeal is full of such errors when we, after, when we re study the jurisprudence that is quoted. With regard to the Haradinaj case, we have mentioned this in our response, and I do not think that they are relevant to this proceeding. Furthermore, in the regard to the five non-cumulative conditions of Rule 63.3b, I shall refer to the arguments which were developed in this regard in the response to this appeal and also in our response to the order closing the investigation as well as our response to the defense's initial appeal against the provisional detention which the defense abandoned in due course. To conclude on this point, I will ask you to note that the defense arguments have no basis and cannot challenge the continued existence or indeed the existence of the five conditions set forth in Rule 63.3b. I would like to conclude with a comment regarding uh, the possibilities for uh, release on bail under whatever conditions. We concur with uh, the uh, co-investigating judges who criminal detention is deemed necessary for a number of reasons. There is no alternative to detention, be it stringent, that uh, would be capable of fully meeting the requirements served by provisional detention and its maintenance. In the, in the event of release, provisional release, there is no bail condition such as uh, the obligation to report daily to uh, the police station, applying curfew, the obligation not to leave Pailin or Phnom Penh or handing over passports, etc. None of these measures would be compatible with the fact that one or several conditions of Rule 63.3b are met. If this chamber believes that the charged person might indeed influence witnesses, indeed be attacked in uh, his security, or that his presence in the society at large might uh, disturb public order, it would not be normal, it would not be consistent to allow this person to move about freely, even under a whole array of conditionalities. Such a measure would be incompatible with the fact that such risk as being real and concrete. Furthermore, I'd like to point out that right now, the public is increasingly aware of what is happening at ECCC. The public is now Mm, very much aware of the past of the person, uh, of the charged person. And this is connected with the fact that more than 3,000 uh, complaints have been filed in case file 2. In this respect, I would like to conclude my intervention by asking for a full denial of all the requests by the defense. Thank you. May it be. The President, the Defense Council, you can now respond. The President, please press the button to activate the mic before you can speak. Mr. Sasawan, thank you, Your Honor. I would like uh, to state again, I think I will be brief. I am wondering as regarding uh, the recollection of the events from 1991, I can see that there has been development and good progress because the government states uh, clearly that uh, we would like to have uh, 
stability in the society. I, I already stated that there might be some crimes like robbery and theft, but uh, the situation has improved uh, and uh, reject, but this re has been rejected by the co-prosecutors. They said that when uh, Kiel Sampon uh, was released, he would have been beaten again. And uh, doubt has been cast on me. What language are we using here? If I say it is uh, uh, wood, then you said it is a metal thing like that, object. My second doubt, you s for example, if Kim Sampon were to be released, that he would uh, exert uh, pressure on witnesses, as uh, stated by the co-prosecutors, uh, 1.7 million people died, uh, including my family members. I got people in my family who died. Uh, and then you said that uh, if he were released, then he would uh, be uh, threatened or uh, mistreated. I think uh, it, is, it does not exist. If you know uh, you have any proof to support your arguments, uh, you can have to present it right here. Because he himself is afraid of dying, of his risk, of his uh, uh, security. And uh, the prosecutor said that uh, you went to Pailin, but uh, uh, Mr. Robert Petit also went to Pailin and no one uh, uh, caused uh, any harm to them. But uh, I think um, it, if we talk about the truth, I also talked to Mr. Kilson Pond. He doesn't need to even thank me. What I'm doing here is to help seek for the truth. And uh, when you said uh, Cambodian people were violent, uh, I think uh, on the 4th of December, I can recall, an, a senior lady approached me and pulled me. I was not very angry with her. In the future, when I see her again, I will apologize to her if I did something wrong. But now, uh, they came here with a kind of t-shirts with logos of the boat racers. And we provoked them, actually. Uh, they were provoked uh, to uh, start the violence that I am suspicious why this kind of thing happened. And now, after all, why should we uh, uh, really uh, detain him further? I would like to move back to the pretrial chamber judges. I would like you to consider the matter as, for example, the co-investigating judges agreed that uh, he would not uh, uh, escape and he is here and I believe that he will never flee but I would like to just uh, wrap up just to, uh, to save our time I am very suspicious now I would like to end by giving maybe five to ten uh, minutes to my colleague uh, to make a comment because he will talk on my behalf also, I just filed an application to the investigating judges to investigate uh, the matter of alleged corruption because it is widespread now and rampant. So I would like uh, my colleague to add further on top of my comments. The president, uh, the co-defense lawyer, you can now take the floor to respond to the submission made earlier. We have asked the co-investigating judges to uh, give us information regarding the proceedings that are underway in the field of corruption. And uh, on this subject, perhaps I could provide some explanations.
Council, you appear to be raising new issues, not by way of response to what has been provided or inserted Alors, by Monsieur the... Le juge, Monsieur I'm le sorry, Madame, let me finish. You are given an opportunity to respond to the remarks of the prosecutor or prosecutors, not to open new matters at this point. If you wish to raise these issues, which I think you are now wishing to raise, it should have been done when you first addressed us, not by way of response. It may be that you can raise these matters in this afternoon's case, but you are at the moment given the opportunity to respond to the submissions by the prosecutors, not to raise new issues. You are now, it seems to me, Alors, to be raising new issues. So, with your leave, uh, I shall not raise a new issue. I shall follow your uh, guidance. But I would like to explain why I'm not insisting uh, in line with uh, what happened with the civil parties this morning. I shall be very brief. First of all, I shall remain silent because I need not uh, be more careful about your honor than you are yourselves. If you believe that we should not talk about corruption here, I shall not impose such a debate upon you. I shall keep silent because I understand uh, your caution in this respect, and I believe uh, that uh, the presumption of innocence that you sometimes uh, question in respect of our accused might be beneficial to you. And I shall also remain, remain silent because uh, the head of state, of the state uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, of this state, has publicly stated that he wants this uh, chamber uh, to uh, to be brought to a conclusion. In this sense, you are mere squatters. A, a member of the government uh, that uh, accommodates you here says that you're obsessed only by money. Thus, corroborating the accusations, be they grounded or not, regarding corruption that uh, might that might possibly be a uh, plaguing this tribunal. And once again, still being brief, I shall keep silent because it's not good to be shooting on ambulances and victims and the wounded. It is not good to be shooting on horses and dying people or institutions. Thank you. The President, the charged person, Mr. Q. Sumpon, would you like uh, to make any final statement? Uh, you can take the floor now if you wish to do so. Uh, I beg your pardon, say Mr. President, uh, Mr. S S Q. Sumpon, because I did not put uh, my headset, I could not hear you. The President, uh, would you make any final statement? Uh, Mr. Kisampan, I would like my defense counsel to continue speaking on my behalf. Defense counsel, Mr. Sosawan. I would like to respond to the arguments made, uh, a submission made by the co-prosecutors. I thank you, Your Honor, for giving me the last minute. I am very suspicious uh, with the international co-prosecutor, and I don't, wa don't want to be long. I think he uh, may not know Pilon very well, because he said that Kiel Sampon was in Pilon and, uh, and then I am suspicious. Uh, however, Jack Vergez, my colleague, already stated clearly that the government has been aware of the matter. So my suspicion has been uh, already uh, stated by my colleague that we would like uh, the pre-trial chamber to take this seriously because uh, Kyu uh, he himself loves himself 
so much because he uh, really w does not want to die. And uh, as I told you earlier, when we met with the victims, uh, uh, the, the senior lady uh, told me and uh, he, she cursed me and I was so disappointed to hear her message because she cursed me to uh, die in a plane crash, for example. And uh, I follow the proceedings and I'm seeking for the truth and I think uh, we can uh, discuss this matter in another trial. I thank you very much, your honors. That is my comment.